Conscious Kitchen podcast family. Welcome to this month's edition of Pride Month. We are celebrating our LGBTQ creatives and powerhouses who constantly inspire us daily to live with purpose, activate our online communities, and advocate for LGBTQ rights worldwide. Why are we even celebrating? Pride promotes equal rights for the gay community in all retrospects. It's a way of increasing society's awareness of the issues of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer communities that they face on a daily basis. We continue to raise awareness and hopes to improve and also give insight on real world stories like creatives like Lauren. This week's very special guest is Lauren, also known as I Am Kittens, an LA staple to the DJ scene and cultural vibration of the city. Lauren has truly been a nonstop positive influence in our community for years. With her transparency through vulnerable and relatable mental awareness posts or through her social channels for advocating for trans rights to her power nonprofit, Power, our DJ workshops for women to learn and all the proceeds are donated to local women's LGBT centers locally. Super badass. We've collaborated for years. Her slaying a DJ set to one of my parties for my brand Dime Piece to also shooting in her and shooting her in my designs in the streets of downtown LA. Lauren is truly a light worker, humble, super down to earth. And what we love about her most is her obsession for cats, beauty, and her love for music and fashion. Please welcome producer and intersectional baddie feminist, Lauren, to the show. Hi. Yes. Hey. Welcome. Hey. Hey. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, boo. Thank you so much for joining. How are you? How are you doing today? How are you doing? Just tell us how it is. How are you? What? What's up? Yo, I'm good. I'm uh, a little mentally burnt out because I have a project that's launching next week. So we're in like crunch time with mm. getting everything together. But I'm tell super us, tell us about good. it. What is it? What is it? What is it? Um, it's called She, Her, They, and it is a content series. So it's going to be podcast action, also YouTube show and a platform essentially that we're starting brand um, to support people who transcend identity expectations. So we're focusing on women, uh, queer people, femmes, not gender non-conforming. It's basically just like a new home and space for all the like intersectional feminist action, community support, shit that I care about, place to highlight stories, places to amplify causes and resources and all that. So yeah, super excited. And our season, season one is launching next week. So wow. I'm fucking psyched yeah Hell yeah how and so season one that? sorry go ahead, Liz. Go ahead. Oh, season one features how many stories or how many episodes so it's i have seven guests um the final episode will just be me so eight guests um but we've got demi lovato we've got Haley kiyoko lauren haragi from fifth harmony we got sid it's it's all highlighting oh. um queer lgbt women this season so I'm super psyched. Hell yeah, those are some powerful names, babe. Can't wait for Everett to launch. That's gonna be super badass. Yeah. Yes, so props to you for, you know, creating and cultivating that space, you know, because I'm sure this is, you know, the, the media needs these type of storytelling. So mm -hmm. congrats. How long did it take mm -hmm. you to, to, to put the project into fruition? Dude, so long. Um, <laughs> so before it was this, I had actually, like maybe two years ago, I wanted to start um, a power podcast, which was kind of an offshoot of the DJ workshops I was doing. I'm like, there's so many people doing cool stuff that are from essentially marginalized and oppressed groups, and they're doing things against the grain. And I wanted to highlight those stories so I could empower people that identify with them. And, um, and then last year, I made a playlist called She, Her, They, which is basically just all queer, um, non-binary, gender non-conforming women and femme artists and trans and all that. Um, and yeah, so I was like, okay, all these people have a playlist now because I realized none of the, there were just none. Mm -hmm. It was all like gay pride playlist. And it was the same artists over mm -hmm. and over and over and the same, you know, allies and icons. And it, it just, I wanted a place that was for the people who don't get a dedicated space. It was crazy to me that there wasn't a discovery zone for people in that community specifically because there's so many in music right now and they're all mm. fucking sick. All mm -hmm. genres from electronic producers to R&B to pop and like singer songwriter folk action, like so many. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a genre agnostic space. It's just like, whatever you like, you'll find someone here. 
and then I was like, wait, a lot of the people who fall under this category are personal friends of mine. Wouldn't it be cool to just chat with them and, mm -hmm. and have them share their stories and their perspectives on creativity and navigating life outside of identity expectations and how to be yourself in a society that doesn't want you to be yourself, mm -hmm. uh, especially in a public facing kind of way. So, so then it turned into a video thing and then I was like, this should be a podcast. And then I was like, this should be a whole brand. So yes. it, it, it all kind of went and we recorded all the episodes during, um, during like last summer actually. Oh. So it's been a whole thing of me being a psycho DIY person and learning how to edit and animate video Wow. <laughs> and doing all this stuff and getting it ready. And then being like, I want something that lives outside of women's month, outside of pride month. Um, so I wanted to launch it right in between the two to be like, these are year round stories. These are voices you should hear all the time, mm -hmm. not just in a dedicated month. So here we yes. are. Yes, I can't imagine how many young lives and just people in general, they're gonna be having a transformation and just their lives might change just to be able to be able, oh, that's, I see myself in these stories. Like, thank you, you know? Totally. That was the whole point because the, mm -hmm. the the conversations are really candid and a lot of these people don't necessarily talk about this kind of stuff uh, openly, especially mm -hmm. in press. We always get asked the same questions. Right. Mm -hmm. So hearing, you know, your favorite artists talk about their way of discovering themselves and exploring their identity mm -hmm. and how they chose to just be themselves openly and what they deal with all that. I'm like, this is going to help someone somewhere. So Hell I know yeah. it helped me. I was like, I'm inspired listening to you guys. So like, <laughs> for sure. somebody else something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the airwaves but... are, are waiting for inspiration. The airwaves are open for it. It's people all over the world are really tuning into just audio. And so, and drawing so much inspiration and knowledge from it. So that's mm -hmm. such an amazing platform you're going to be creating. So tell us a little bit about pronouns, right? So a lot of our guests, people are still learning. It's still, it's yeah. everyone is still just learning. I'm still learning. But, yeah. Every day we're going to continue to learn with the pronouns. So tell us a little bit about pronouns pronouns, your pronouns, and just kind of just drop that wisdom on our on our listeners? Um, so I think it's been really interesting observing this the last year, because I've noticed more people come out with um, different pronoun preferences, different identity labels, um, realizing their gender or their sexuality is not really what they thought it was before because everyone's been in lockdown away from society not having to perform for other people mm. not having to go through life putting on their identity that was sort of forced upon them by society they're just at home mm -hmm. and I think so many people realized that the things they were doing how they were presenting how they identified all that they're realizing parts of it or all of it were for other people, were for society, were for whatever, and take that away. And they're just doing it for themselves. And a lot of people were like, shit, I'm gay or I'm non-binary or I'm, you know, whatever. That is not what I thought I was. And it's been so cool seeing so many people have that realization. And mm -hmm. through all of that, there's been much more discourse around uh, gender non-conforming identities, non-binary identities, um, uh, pronouns, all of that stuff. And for so long, like I've, I've been out lesbian since I was 15. So this is like old news for me. Mm -hmm. And I've studied like gender and queer theory in college 10 years ago. But I always thought that it was like, you could use they, them if you were non-binary and that is the end. And I thought for so long, like, to be non-binary, you have to fully identify as like neither, neither binary gender that we've had as mm -hmm. male, female by society. So I thought that is the only option for they, them, and that is it. Mm -hmm. And now through the last year is I'm like, oh my God, there's so many options. And it's not just a third gender of like, oh, there's male, female, and non-binary. It's like, it's its own other complete spectrum that doesn't even interact. It's just like its own thing. And on that spectrum, you could be anywhere. You could be like 
you could be super non-binary and just be like, fuck the system, fuck gender. I don't believe in any of this. Mm -hmm. Or you could be like, you know, like personally for me, I'm like, I, I'm comfortable in my body. I don't feel like I'm not a woman, but I feel like the traditional uh, definition and what society projects on you and expects of you as a woman is something that I don't really like align with fully. Like my, I'm a woman and I don't, um, interact with men romantically or for any anything in my identity like i have men that i love as family and friends but my life doesn't revolve around a man in any way like our patriarchy is kind of you know set for us so i'm like okay i'm not looking to marry a dude i'm not out here trying to be like i need to make babies i love women i am a woman i interact with women romantically so I'm like i don't feel like i fully I'm in the box of what society says a woman is, but my body, my presentations, feminine, like all that stuff, I'm super comfortable with that. So I realized I'm like, you know what? I think something that kind of represents me a bit more is having a she, they situation, pronoun wise. I don't really, I'm, I'm still exploring this. I don't know if I'm like label me as non-binary because I don't know if that fits either. Mm -hmm. But for now, I'm like, I'm into the idea of having another pronoun in there that sort of speaks to the out of the box part of my identity. And that just makes me feel comfortable and seen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that's something that can totally change and evolve for so many people throughout their life. And it's nice that now gender and pronouns and sexuality are being accepted and seen as mm -hmm. fluid as they really are and always have been. Yes. And yes. yeah, I think so many people are just like, I have, I have friends who they, their like pronoun set is literally like he, she, they, Z, like they got all the options. Cause they're like, I'm cool with all of them. I feel like these all speak to different parts of me. So use whatevs. Yes. And it's just nice seeing that exploration and that um, openness with, language because i feel like language has always been so limiting yeah it's always so black and white so this or that but it's it's so exciting mm -hmm. to see within like you said in the last year everyone educating the public on pronouns and and even educating people on how what the proper way to ask someone's pronoun is and to not assume that someone's pronoun is he and she so mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's an exciting time i feel like yeah. Is, there, yeah. is there something that helps you with your self exploration? Do you like journal? Do you like write write things down? Like how do you how do you kind of figure that out? I write in my journal a lot. Um, I really like. I realize that that's something that I need for my own sanity because I just will have way too many things going on in my head and I can't make sense of them sometimes <laughs> unless I just like word vomit out on paper and. Um, and I also read a lot. I read a lot. I listen to what a lot of other people are saying and explaining for their process. And honestly, TikTok has been very enlightening and insightful because <laughs> so the cool. algorithm knows knows <laughs> me. And it's like, here, let's give you all this gender discourse yeah. and you know theory around that. So I'm hearing yeah. other people talk and I'm literally every day I'm learning something new about language and um and identity and and just how to respect others learn more about others respect and learn more about myself so yes this this evolution of the human race wow we're just on this wild ride right of just constantly yeah. absorbing constantly mm -hmm. staying curious and yeah it's it's such a wild ride so that's cool TikTok oh. and journaling yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah cool <laughs> yeah shout out TikTok. <laughs> nice so Lauren, so you you see, uh, so from your social media presence, you seem super cool, calm, and collected. Do you, yeah. or, or do you, are you an introvert, an extrovert, and how do you kind of manage that part of like your life with mm -hmm. with your career? I am so introverted, <laughs> and I realized it even more during lockdown. Um, I didn't. I, I always knew I was an introvert, but. 
I've always lived alone or had a lot of space my whole life. And my girlfriend actually moved here from New York in March, last March. So I right. definitely got to ask you about that later. <laughs> right, right before, right before the pandemic. Yeah, thank Whoa. God. She made, she made it right in time. And okay. so I had never actually um, shared space with somebody in that way. And so I really realized, whoa, all that alone time I had before was stuff that I, I needed that to recharge from even small social interactions. I didn't realize how intensely sensitive and overstimulated I get in social environments mm -hmm. um, and social exchanges. So, you know, I had to, I had to be like, whoa, like I need solitude. Like I need to go like re legit be alone to feel sane. And if I don't, I'm a fucking maniac. <laughs> so, so I'm like, oh God, I didn't realize I knew that before because I was just by default having it. But um, but yeah, that I realized too, like I started out DJing and that was such a, a special thing for me because I've always been kind of socially anxious and socially awkward. And that was the perfect way for me to be in a social party setting, mm -hmm. but I'm secluded. I'm in a booth mm -hmm. that no one can get into unless I allow them. I don't have to talk to anyone. I don't have to do anything. I'm just there. And the fact that I'm, you know, sharing music and playing and controlling the energy, people think I'm being social and I'm extroverted, but I'm not like at all. I'm just chilling in my bubble and it's nice and safe. Wow. And then I can go do a just hanging out with the dudes, leave. hanging out with the DJs yeah. behind and just chilling for sure. Exactly. But if you put me out like, at a festival in the middle of the crowd, I'm gonna have a panic attack. So it's it's been really interesting realizing like just how sensitive I am. Yeah. And I think with um, even with social media, I get that kind of social anxiety of the pressure to share, the pressure to be open, the pressure to like be vulnerable and constantly posting like the Instagram algorithm now for engagement is like you should be posting this three times a day, that yeah. 10 times a day, and this 17 times a day. And I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can't, I can't. I, even just sharing my energy in that way mm -hmm. is overwhelming for me. So I just have to kind of like find a balance of what feels comfortable and often enough without just overdoing it. Yes. Yeah. But I, I, I really like how you resonate off, off, off online because it's like, I feel yeah. like you're just truly like you're talking your home girl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank I'm you for that. I think that's really fun. And, you know, you talk about like your beauty things or just like, you know, shit that makes you angry and you're very vocal about it. And I think, yeah, you're a great role model, babe. I don't, I don't think you're, you know, yeah, you're not doing anything you. wrong, but for it's sure. great. And, um, and, and, and so talking more about like your DJing and stuff, I'd love to know, how did you manage with during during lockdown and everything? Um, obviously, you're not doing as more as, as many live gigs. Like, how did you figure out new ways to hustle or you know for income and do, but also stay creative? Like, how did you manage during that during during that whole thing? Um, I'm so grateful that I had all of the the brand deals and brand support that I sort of garnered the years prior because that made this year super comfortable for me this last year thank god um and <clears throat> so income wise and hustle wise i was fine it was just like i i hosted a show for amazon music where i was just chatting with other artists it's amazing um, to stay creatively stimulated i started on the show that's launching next week i was like what can i do but i realized i really needed a break from teaching like badly yeah i had been i'd been yeah. in hustle mode for eight years and, yep. and yeah. I, you know, think, thankfully I got a lot of great opportunities. I played like Coachella and EDC and like Vegas residencies and all that, but I needed time to not, and to pause and be like, okay, what do I get joy from? Because it had kind of turned into just a job at mm -hmm. that point, mm -hmm. right. because I I was being put in in places that I had to play for other people versus playing just just what I loved. Mm -hmm. You're at a festival, you have to worry about people wanting to rage, and you're at mm -hmm. in Vegas. It's like you, there's so much pressure there for yeah. pe keeping people's energy in a certain place, and I was just like, yeah. man, I I miss just playing for my own joy, and I hadn't done that in a minute. So 
it was nice to have a forced break to not touch my turntables. And I tried it first because everyone was like, got to go live stream your DJ set, like Instagram, Twitch, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I tried that for a sec and it literally depressed me Mm. to be playing in my room alone because I realized then too, even though I'm introverted, the, I got a nice energy exchange when I was playing music with people, their reactions, their responses to things like Mm -hmm. that fed me. So not having that and just being in my room, I kind of felt like I was tap dancing on the side of the street with a little hat out Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, and it just made me feel not well. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let's take a break. So I've just been working on the podcast, working on music stuff, working on my like mental health, surviving this fucking insane time. Yeah. Yes. It's like a lot to process. So yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, we all needed that global rest. And it seems like it was such a, a also a blessing for you because yeah, you had these these great collaborations with um, brands I'm sure you love. And you got to be super hyper focused on on this new platform for yourself. Yeah. So that's super badass. Totally. Can't wait I to get yeah. for it to come out. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's same. some of like the most beautiful time, the most beautiful moments that came out of this time, right? That that hard totally. stop to make you re- really, really reevaluate what is it that you're doing and where do you want to go next? So now knowing that, you know, you didn't feel like it was bringing you as much joy DJing for someone else and not being able to do it in your particular way. What do you see for like the future of like your your DJ career? And how do you want to, I guess, change, change so that that feeling doesn't happen again? Um, so, I mean, I'm definitely still going to DJ. I still totally sure. enjoy it, but mm-hmm. I definitely now have realized, like, I need to not be so concerned with the expectation mm-hmm. of whatever space I'm in, which, yeah, I need to consider that. Like, I'm not going to play slow jams at a festival, which, like, <laughs> that would actually be fire, but, you know, like, <laughs> kids are there for, to, like, listen to electronic music. I need to keep that in mind, but also remember that balance of what is it? For me and catering to that as well so i'll definitely be keeping that in mind i'm also working on my own music more i haven't released music in a couple of years um but now i can sort of like dictate what my sound is what i expect from a set and yeah just kind of adjust it that way but i do have i do have a tour planned top of next year i was supposed to go on tour with dylan francis for like a month and a half i remember the, those flyers hell yeah Dude, it literally, we had to cancel it like the week before everything shut down. So we're going, we're doing that still in 2022. And I feel like that's far away enough that I can like mentally prepare. Prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I miss it now. Like I, I miss, I miss clubs and parties and music on really loud speakers like oh, miss that. Man. i know i think we all fantasize about that right because i think we yeah. we've all been so spoiled by just like the 10 different parties you could visit in one night especially oh, yeah. in los angeles culture yeah i mean oh we were so like, spoiled yeah <laughs> I, I, I just it. i just dreamt i was at like the best party two nights ago and i was like oh that was so amazing yeah, <laughs> I, I even miss um, shitty parties like <laughs> Right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pivot over a little bit more over to another question yeah. we've been wanting to ask you. Um, so you're definitely a lesbian, or I guess you wouldn't even put that into your into your into your title. I just would say you I woman would. of. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Liz, you want to ask her this question? You oh, wrote, you wrote this one. The which number one? three. Oh. Oh, number three. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So as a lesbian woman of color that is unapologetic about your identity, how has the Persian community reacted to you? And can you tell us a story of a time where you may have felt like discriminated against and how you might have handled it? We're just hoping that this this kind of information helps other people to just embrace who they are, you know? Yeah. Um, You know, it was definitely a very long process to gain acceptance from that side of the family for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but once they got there, it was great, but <laughs> I've noticed, um, I haven't gotten much discrimination from that community, like in a, in a public forum, mm-hmm. but I have gotten so much, so much vulnerability and, and support and thanks from so many Middle Eastern mm-hmm. women who wow. are like, I get DMs daily. I honestly should start a folder for it. Uh, that would be amazing. I, that would be cool. I'm 
you know, I'm queer and, or I think I'm queer and, you know, I live in Iran or I live in one of, you know, another Middle Eastern country and I didn't know it was okay. And, you know, thank you for being so outspoken. It makes it easier for me or it makes it easier for my family to see that somebody can be successful and also Middle Eastern and queer and, um, you know, even people who are just like wanting to come out to someone, mm-hmm. even if they, they can't tell anyone else in their life, their friends, their family, they're just like, I just needed to tell somebody and I knew you would understand and I needed to share the secret with someone. Mm-hmm. And that is always the most like emotional thing for me because I'm like, God, I can't imagine. I can't imagine having to hide who you are from everyone in your life mm-hmm. out of just genuine fear and not just fear of like them not being into it, but like fear of for your life, fear of your family disowning yeah. you, fear of violence. Like I, yeah. c- I can't imagine. And yeah. you know, thankfully, I'm I'm half Persian. My mom is white, and she's super. She's been super accepting since day one. She's like super outspoken and just like you know let's go to pride like since day one oh, amazing so, so i had i had that stability and that support and that balance in one corner mm-hmm. and that really helped me navigate the rest of this stuff so i think for people who um are facing a hard time whether it's with family or friends or something as long as they have one person they can find one person it can be a friend a teacher a distant relative a person on social media, something, some person, some form of community to like <clears throat> hold them down through the hard process of it, then it just, it makes it easier to, to keep moving and keep being yourself and keep, you know, being okay with who you are. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Finding that anchor of support. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's powerful, powerful tip. To, to share and also I love how you know even the messages that you're getting on your dms like it must be like almost like little signs and like uh hints from like god or something to show that you are on your right path of you know totally. being that <clears throat> influence and being that voice for women especially mm-hmm. Persian or you know those type of that in that community so yes that's awesome, babe. yeah because yeah, people are really going to resonate with you and your story because you because you are Persian because you are within that category they they feel more comfortable like you said reaching out to you and telling you that secret and that that's mm-hmm. such an amazing release for them to be able to tell you that and just kind of at least e- even though you're they're not going to see you every day or anything but they're still able to tell someone what what's yeah. going on with them yeah exactly and it's it's interesting too because um I, I came out to one of my uncles maybe like i don't know four or five years ago at this point i forget but he's super conservative very devout muslim i was terrified to tell him um but i was dating somebody at the time who's much more of a, of a public figure and mm-hmm. it was like oh my gosh this this could be something that he sees in some gossip tabloid thing on TV. And like, I can't have them find out that way. Mm-hmm. I didn't need to tell them before because I, I wasn't dating anyone seriously. I, I wasn't like, you know, I'm going to bring home my wife. And I, I don't know. I just didn't see the reason to, to tell them yet. Um, but then I was like, fuck, I have to tell them. I have to now. And so um, thank god he was his his faith has made him so compassionate and loving like i told him like i'm dating someone that's a girl and he's like okay so what's the problem oh, and amazing. i literally started like bawling because i was so relieved but he gave me such amazing advice and was you know like if as long as you're with somebody who respects you and loves you and um treats you well that's all that matters like essentially fuck what everyone else thinks mm-hmm. but He's like, you know, does anyone else in the family know? Do you need my help telling them? Um, And his advice was just remind them that you would never disrespect the family, that you would never embarrass or bring shame on the family. Like that's such a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, as long as you're not cartwheeling down the street naked and like, you know, (laughs) doing drugs on TV or something like you're you loving somebody who loves you back in a healthy way, it's not going to bring shame on the family. Yeah. But wow. I, it, it made me realize there is that, that stereotype and that stigma that gay people are just like 
party hard and promiscuous and crazy mm. and like do all this reckless stuff. And I'm like, no, most of us are really boring and we just sit at home and like cook and play with our animals and want to start a farm. <laughs> like that's most gay people, to be honest. So, cute. so, so, but it was really helpful yeah. to navigate things by being like, hey, you know, I'm just a normal person doing normal things. My life is respectable. I'm making a living. I'm, you know, modest in many ways. I'm not doing anything wild. And I think to have, that to either show or speak on for other people who are, you know, of a more ethnic, strict, conservative culture to be like, hey, there's people like that. Here's one. Here's this girl that just sits home with her cats and her girlfriend all day. Mm -hmm. Like to have some more representation that is like very normal, I think is helpful for other, for older generations and conservative generations to understand like we exist. Yeah, it's not all crazy partying. Yeah, it's so good. You you found an unexpected ally and your uncle and you helped him reframe his view potentially or his vision of how, you know, the, the queer community might may be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. Good times. <laughs> awesome, babe. OK, so I want to know. I mean, so I moved away from Los Angeles like two years ago. And I think the last time we saw each other, I think we went to like, shit, I don't even know, maybe Soho House or something in the West Side. <laughs> yeah. Oh my and we God. Were like, yeah. And we were like gossiping about relationships or people were dating. I think I was online dating back then or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, so I've seen that you have a new love. I mean, you've had a, a new love interest for a while now. And yeah. it's so beautiful to see the glow up on your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's so cool. So yeah. um, I'd love to know more about like your relationship or yeah, or would you have any tips for making a relationship successful or any advice for people that are stuck in patterns that probably don't serve them anymore? Anything like that? Anything you've possibly learned too during COVID? Oh yeah, this has been the absolute biggest growth learning thing for me of all time. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, I, you remember, I used to just be in a string of like horrendous, toxic relationships and hating my life. And yeah. I was like, why do I keep dating these, these people <laughs> that treat me like shit or that make me unhappy or are just not the right thing for me? And I'm chasing mm -hmm. that, that feeling or that type of thing. Like, why yes, am I honey. chasing that? Why am I attracting that? Yes. And so I got my ass into therapy, which shout out to that. Yes. <laughs> so I've been in therapy for many years at this point. It's Great. been a lot of work, um, but yeah, I I realized slowly, slowly as I was growing, as I was healing my wounds that that made me believe I needed or deserved or craved a toxic kind of love. Um, as those healed, it was like my internal magnet was recalibrating. And then it was like, okay, we don't need to chase somebody that makes us feel this way anymore. Like we can chase somebody who makes us feel good because we are giving that to ourselves. We are making ourselves feel good. We love ourselves now. So let's get someone who does the same. Let's match that energy. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, and I, I met my girlfriend and she's the most like loving, selfless, understanding, incredible person. And, um, and I really did need that, especially during this time. Like we would have not gotten through this whole last year if both of us weren't um, very self-aware and very like, I guess, compassionate and emotionally in intelligent, I guess. Like we understand our emotions and can talk about them and talk through things. Like we don't fight. We just we're like, okay, here's an issue. Let's, let's work it out. Let's mm -hmm. figure out the solution because we are a team. Let's figure out the solution here. Whether it's you're feeling one way or I'm feeling another way, what can we both do to make this feel better for us as a team? And um, so like for me, this is my longest relationship I've ever been in. Amazing. And How long have you been I've together never, now? Like over a year and a half. So Amazing, babe. It's, it's Love is real. Minute. Love yeah. is real. And a and really think, unique year and a half too. A year and a half where totally. you're, it's literally just you guys in there, right? Just you yeah. too. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it really was, I think I saw for so many couples, it was really a make or break time. I know yes. so many people who broke up, got divorced, like all that. Mm -hmm. And the people who have gotten through it 
it has been an emotional mental boot camp. Hell yeah. And and that's, you know, if people got through it, then that means they were meant to get through it. And that's fantastic. And I think for me, I really learned um, before, before all my work and I guess therapy and whatnot, I really had a lot of trouble setting boundaries. And that means for small things, like I used, I used to feel guilty closing a door to have alone time. I used to not be able to do that because I'd be like, well, what if it makes them feel blah, blah, blah. Like mm. I was that weak <laughs> with that kind of stuff. And I had to learn to not be because I realized, okay, I need alone time or else I'm a raging bitch. And I need to learn how to communicate that to my, my partner. I need to learn how to reassure them so that they know it's not that I want to be away from them. It's that I just need to like process my shit and go through my, you know, solitude for my health. And just doing that has been such a major, like, I don't know. It was me really being like, okay, I've grown because I can do that now. I never yeah. used to be able to do that. And, yeah. you know, learning to find balance and consider somebody else. I've, al I've always lived alone. And now it's like, okay, I need to not be so controlling and OCD about how the, you know, everything is and what's mm -hmm. in the house and what's not and what's where. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and yeah, I think just really just learning to over communicate in a very effective way has been the most helpful thing. And from the people I've seen that have gone through serious hardships or not survived their relationships during this time, they all have one common theme. They don't fucking talk about the problems. Mm. They like, there's a problem, they know it's a problem and they just let it sit there and fester and rot and they don't talk about it. And it's just this big like thing in the corner. Yes. And, and then it eventually breaks them. And I'm like, okay, if we want a good shot here, we have to immediately see there's something funky over there. Let's fucking talk about it and fix it and clean it up and mm -hmm. put it on a nice little, you know, thing in front of us so we can always address it and make sure it never turns into something bad. Yes, communication um, is everything. It really, really, really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, babe. I'm I'm proud of you because honestly, like finding love in such a like a crazy time and also dating and finding love in Los Angeles is like Ooh, I don't know. It almost seemed like impossible. So I mean, you know, I found her so, in New York. So yeah. <laughs> I had to move my ass to Madrid, Spain, where I live now. So, <laughs> you know, babe, you know what it's like. So congratulations yeah. for, you know, yeah. manifesting the partner of your dreams. Yeah. And breaking yeah. your patterns, because that is one of the most difficult things to do as, mm -hmm. as an individual for yourself. Uh, an amazing thing to do, but a difficult thing to analyze and yeah. then break the patterns. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. I'm like happy to know it's possible. I feel like you can get over anything at this point. Love that. Yeah. Communication, uh, therapy, you know, it's a long road ahead. And I don't think it happens, you know, obviously we're still discovering and, you know, unlearning so much about ourselves, but knowing mm -hmm. that it is a long journey, you know, I'm sure, yeah, yeah I'm sure you're still doing that. Does your girlfriend do therapy too, or just you? Oh yeah. We, oh yeah. We're both like on top of it and always reading like, you know, self-help books and things like that. It's like, it's yeah. just part of, it's like you want to eat a healthy diet. You want to take care of your body. You mm -hmm. have to take care of your mind just the same. You don't wait until it's a big problem to try and pick up the pieces. You have to work mm -hmm. at it all the time. And slowly you'll start noticing improvements and differences. And Yes. Yeah. The synergy yeah. of life, you know, mental uh, heart totally. set, mindset, physical set, all that beautiful stuff. What are so, some, of the, some of the top books or your, your top self-help books that like really helped you or that like you really have been moved by? Um, there's one called, uh, the body keeps the score that has been really, really great for me. And it's all about how our bodies, um, and minds hold on to trauma and how that sort of sets our mental, physical responses and triggers and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's really just interesting because it bridges like neuroscience with psychology, with physical body, everything. It's like all tying it together. And the more I read that, the more I was like, oh my God, that's why I feel this way when someone does that. Mm -hmm. And I can now pinpoint exactly when it's happening, why it's happening, where it's coming from and how to work on it. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's just been really enlightening. Yeah. Yeah. The sure. Body Keeps a Score by Bessel van der Kolk, MD. 
could get that on Audible. Okay. I have it in my Audible right now. <laughs> so that was quick. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and grab that book, guys. Well, oh my gosh, Lauren, you have dropped so many amazing gems today. Like, whew, thank you so much for your time. I'd love Thanks, to just like you. ask you a few more things. Um, so fast forward to being 50, what would you want to have accomplished in as your legacy of Lauren? My legacy a, of Lauren? Yeah, or as a person um, or as a human or anything like that. As a person, I would love to have set up a full kind of organization that provides resources to marginalized people of all intersecting identities and uh, specifically focusing on women, femmes, uh, queer and gender nonconforming people and um, providing them with any resources they need to be their best self, to go after their dreams, to survive in life, to thrive in life. Love that. That's such a great goal. Yeah, to be of service and to be of value for others in the future. I totally see you doing that, babe. Oh, Thrive in. She already Ooh. is. Yeah, you already are. Yeah. You're already inspiring people. You're already doing some of this work, like basically, you know, laying down the ground stones for it all. All right, babe. Is there anything else you would like to share with us before we wrap up the podcast? Um, I guess just go follow at she, her, they on Instagram and yes. watch all the episodes of she, her, they at she, her, they dot me www.shareday.me um find Perfect. me on instagram shoot me a note hell yeah Whatever. here here to be of service there you go thanks boo yes thank you so thank much you. yes you and also so go ahead and check out you know i am kittens at instagram and check out all her really cool like um igtv um feeds those are really informative for everything all the stuff that she's been working on mm -hmm. and i love all the reels too for beauty beauty and makeup gotta check out that oh, yeah. super dope <laughs> and cute, Thank and you cute, guys. Cute, cute kitten videos too go check her out for oh my god oh yeah go go <laughs> like just get excited about my three cats because they're insane and they're so beautiful <laughs> and then look out for for new music from kittens coming out in the next year or so right yeah for sure yeah awesome all right, guys. Cool. So if you found this podcast valuable, go ahead and please share it with anyone you think will resonate. Anything you think will get some value from this. You know, we're celebrating Pride Month. Shit, all year round, okay? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Country Kitchen Podcast where we create, you know, consciously rich conversations that, you know, are always at, in the kitchen. You know, the kitchen is where your heart is at the home. So, yeah. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in and catch us on the next episode. Talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.